on behalf of my sister-in-law, Adelia Fu, I'd like to welcome all of you here to take time out to uh, remember uh, my sister-in-law. Of course, only just a few months after my brother, Helen, died, and so we'll be here again. But uh, to begin our program today, we will open with a song. If you'd like to stand and we'll sing together. If you have this, it's in in the bowl here. Psalm 111, he will fall and then we'll have a prayer. including in recent times those who have died. And we who are alive want to continue to be loyal to you, to also remember these ones and their faithful deeds, and to be encouraged by it, 
and although death is our enemy and your enemy, we know, Father, that you will bring, back, bring these ones back to life according to your will and purpose, and we look forward to that day. That's why on this occasion, Father, even though we feel sad, and we do uh, shed tears because of our grief, but we know you comfort us because of your word and what it says. So please be with us and help us. And as we listen to the talk, may we be encouraged to focus on the future and the accomplishment of your will, which we know will come pass, will come to pass shortly by means of your kingdom. Father, please hear our prayer now. We leave ourselves in your care, and we humbly pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Today we have this occasion, this funeral service, so we'll invite now our speaker, Brother Michael Davies, to come forward to deliver the funeral discourse. <laughs> Well, we'd like to, <coughs> excuse me, on behalf of the family, thank everyone for coming today to show their support and uh, to remember uh, Adelia. Adelia, or Delia, as she was more commonly known, was born on March 9, 1946, in the Philippines. She was the youngest of four children, her brother Ricardo, sisters Leticia, and Urzuminda, and uh, of course along with her many nephews and nieces as she didn't have children of her own. Her mum, Nico Medisa, and her father, Leon, were devoted parents, and of course they were also worshippers of Jehovah God. This real love for Jehovah, she, they passed on to Delia, and uh, she grew up to to really love her creator and we can clearly see that as we've got to know her over these many years. At the age of 13 she decided to dedicate her life to her creator Jehovah and that's what she did. At 13 years of age she made a decision that she never looked back on. She carried on right to her death and uh, we're very proud of her for what she was able to accomplish. When she was 20 in 1966, she began to pioneer. Now, for those who aren't familiar with this term, it's a, a person who spends a, a large amount of time each month out preaching about her Creator to others. And that's what she did in 1966 when she was just 20 years of age. Very soon after that, she was invited to serve along with some other uh, friends, <coughs> Filipino uh, sisters, to Hong Kong as missionaries. That was in 1970. And uh, you can imagine how much of a challenge that would have been to go to a, a place that was very different to where she'd been brought up. And to learn another language, Cantonese, which is uh, very difficult for uh, us to learn. But she did that, and uh, she, she put her heart and soul into it. And those that served along with her in Hong Kong I really express that, how much she was very devoted to her ministry there in Hong Kong. Well, as a missionary, she lived in various missionary homes in Hong Kong and uh, came to pass across paths with uh, many of the family, such as uh, Uncle Colin and uh, later on Uncle Gordon. But there was one particular missionary that she had her eyes on. That was Alan. The trouble is, is that uh, Alan was very focused on his ministry too, and was not interested in getting married. So it was uh, many years that they got to know each other, and even shared sometimes missionary homes, lived in the same house, but she still had her eyes on Alan. Well, eventually, after many years of trying to win his heart, he gave in, and they got married in 1989. And, you know, after they got married, Alan made this comment, why didn't I do this earlier? <laughs> yes, it was uh, over many years that they got to know each other, and they got to know each other very well before uh, those uh, romantic feelings blossomed to the point that they got married. And that put them in a very good stead as they 
both loved Jehovah, both loved their assignment, loved what they were doing, and that bonded them or gelled them so closely together. So even though they were married in 1989, you would think that they'd be married their entire lives, how close they were together. They continued their missionary work after they got married in Hong Kong. And in fact, they started to serve as circuit overseers. In other words, what they would do is they would travel to different congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses in Hong Kong. Each week, they would travel to another congregation and they continued in that work right up until 1991 when they returned to New Zealand to look after Alan's parents. Yeah. Well, sadly, of course, they passed away in 2011. And uh, such was their love for their assignment that they wanted to go back to Hong Kong. And they actually wrote to the uh, headquarters uh, to ask to go back to their assignment in Hong Kong back in 2011. But, uh, of course, at that time, Alan's health started to deteriorate and he had some problems with his heart. And uh, for that reason, they decided it would be best for them to stay and pioneer in New Zealand, which they did right up until both of their passing <coughs> in the last uh, few months or few days. So in total, Delia spent 47 years full-time preaching to people about her faith. 47 years, along with uh, Alan, of 53 years. So as you can imagine, there's 100 years collectively they spent full-time talking about their Creator to everyone that would listen. In fact, it reminds me of a little experience that we had just at the, uh, the hospital just uh, only a few weeks ago. And uh, Delia, of course, had had a couple of strokes and she was uh, struggling even to, to talk and she was very sleepy but she came alive one night and she was desperate for Katrina and I to talk to a particular nurse who had been very kind to her and it was the uh, invitation for our convention so she was very insistent we couldn't leave until we'd gone and spoken to this nurse given him the invitation and we, she wanted us to study with him and I think that really sums up both uh, Alan and Delia and their course of life. <laughs> Many people even here in our audience today can probably testify to the faith and that uh, zeal to serve their God because many here today are only here because they taught you. And it's really nice to be amongst uh, so many who are being touched in this way by both Delia and Alan. <coughs> Well, many may wonder then, why should such a, a beautiful person such as Delia, why should she go through months of suffering uh, with her battle with cancer and eventually pass away? Why should that happen to a person who did so much for everyone else? Well, while in hospital, even while suffering and uh, at times been in pain, Delia not once blamed God because she knew the reason why we have to suffer she knew the reason why eventually we die and it's uh, what she's been doing for 47 years is telling people why the situation has come about perhaps you'd like to share with me what her beliefs were what she told so many people in the book of Genesis chapter 2 in verse 17 describes the situation with our very first parents, Adam and Eve. Now, Adam and Eve were given everything that they could possibly have wanted. A paradise earth, all of the, the food that you could ever want, peace, harmony, no sickness, no death. But they were just asked to do one thing, just to be obedient to God. And in a very small thing, you might say, by not eating from a particular tree in the garden. But notice what happened in verse 17 of chapter 2. But as for the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat from it, for in the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. So God gave that warning, but sadly Adam and Eve disregarded that warning. 
they ate from the tree. And sadly, they passed on and here to death to every one of the offspring. And that includes us. It includes Delia. So sadly, because of the uh, being disobedient to our Creator, we all suffer this, uh, this thought of dying. The result has been in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. If you'd like to turn with me there too. This has been the result. That is why just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, yes, to all of us, because they had all sinned. Yes, our inherited sin means that from daily we let our Creator down. And there's nothing in our power person that we can do to change that. But that sadly has resulted in this curse of dying. We benefit from being here today. Well, we certainly will miss Delia. In the coming weeks and months, we'll miss her voice, we'll miss her touch, and we'll miss seeing her devotion to Jehovah God. But we are comforted because we know that she ran the course faithfully to the finish. She has worked hard. She has served her Creator. And now she awaits in Jehovah's memory, the safest place you can possibly be. Now for each of us, we need to wait. We need to wait patiently on our God, Jehovah. We need to wait till the day that Jehovah calls her and she answers. and we'll sing together song number 134 see yourself when all is you <laughs> Thank you. 
God, uh, Jehovah. We wish it this uh, sad time to approach you in prayer. And thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for the discourse we've enjoyed and to really put before us the importance of attending and coming to a house of mourning to show the uncertainty of life in this world. Heavenly Father, we reflect on the life of Sister Delia and the example she has set in the congregation. She will be sorely missed in the Mount Albert congregation along with her beloved husband. And we can mourn at this time and we can be sad. But the funeral service is now completed, Heavenly Father, and the best is yet to come. And we look forward to a time when there will be a resurrection. And we pray, Heavenly Father, as we reflect on these things, may we reflect uh, soberly, Heavenly Father, on the words of your faithful servant, Nehemiah, as we say this final prayer for Sister Adelia in remembrance of her beloved husband, Brother Alan. Please, Jehovah, remember them for good. Many things that we learn from the life of this faithful couple, they have served you with faithfulness and diligence through trial and tribulation. Heavenly Father, they have served you all their lives and they have set a wonderful, sterling example for all to follow. And we pray that you will continue to remember that in the time to come, Heavenly Father, when there will be a resurrection as so beautifully brought out in the discourse. The many things that we wish to thank you for, Jehovah, we pray and thank you too for the love and the spiritual care that the Mount Albert congregation has afforded Sister Delia, Brother Allen, as well as the Chinese-speaking congregations. We thank you, Jehovah, for the care and attention that's been afforded through the hospice arrangement through Linton Lodge. We appreciate the, the physical care that Sister Rendell has devoted to her sister-in-law. And to Jehovah, we thank you for above and beyond the call of duty, the professional care that Sister Blanchett has given in this regard. So we are grateful, Heavenly Father, for the mercies that you show us. All of these things combined prove a fact that by this all will know that you're my disciples with the love that exists among us. So please now, Heavenly Father, as we conclude this prayer and conclude this funeral service for our beloved sister, may we reflect very carefully, Heavenly God, on the promise that your, your angel made to a most desirable man. 100 years of age, he told him to go to the end, the end of his natural life or by unforeseen circumstances, and then he said he would rest, and Sister Adelia is resting. But the most beautiful promise that was ever made to a human followed, where the angel said, you will stand up for your lot at the end of the days. So please, Jehovah, may we conclude on that note and look forward to a time where we can enjoy refreshment and association together to be built and encouraged. So please accept our thanks for this wonderful service. Bless the family. Bless the congregations, and we ask these things of you respectfully and lovingly, in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.
couple of brief scriptures so that uh, we can keep in mind Jehovah's view on the situation following on from what we've discussed in 1st Corinthians chapter 15. So in 1st Corinthians 15 and the first part, second part of verse 54 where it says, Death is swallowed up forever. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? The sting producing death is sin, and the power for sin is the law. But thanks to God, for he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's how we're going to feel at the moment. We feel the sting of death. We feel the pain of that. And yet uh, we look forward to where we will say, where is your sting? It will no longer have any impact over us because it will be no more. Jehovah will have taken it away once for all time because of the ransom of Jesus Christ. So how can we be comforted now? A very well-known scripture to all of us in the book of Job, even though the wording has been slightly changed, but it still brings the same thoughts. So Job chapter 14, verses 14 and 15. says, if a man dies, can he live again? I will wait all the days of my compulsory service until my relief comes. You will call, and I will answer you. You will long for the work of your hands, or the footnotes still reads, you will yearn. And it's just so good to think of how Jehovah views it. He's yearning, he's longing for the time that he can bring back the Hadidelia. And we feel like that too, so if we feel so strongly about it, but we can't wait for her to be back with us, then we can be assured Jehovah, who is the epitome of love, who has given us the ability to love, must feel it even more so than we do today. So it gives us great confidence that if Jehovah yearns to bring back a faithful servant like Aunt Adelia, then uh, we can certainly have confidence that he will in fact do that. Well, now it's for us to trust in Jehovah to fulfil his promise, to be there, Welcome Auntie Delia back and uh, to follow the fine example that she set for all of us in our own personal lives. And uh, we look forward to that time when she will hear his voice and she will come out and we'll be reunited again. So shall we just offer a prayer, shall we? Jehovah God, our precious Father in the heavens, at this very sad day we come to you in prayer. And we ask, please, that you'll remember the very fine example of uh, Auntie Delia and all that she's done for uh, so many and how she's touched so many people's lives, including all of us here. And, and we ask in particular, Jehovah, that you'll help each one of us as uh, she's sleeping and she doesn't uh, even know or aware of the situation around her, but we do. And therefore, please help us to cope with the, uh, the grief and the sorrow that we feel but at the same time to lift our hearts up with joy as we think about the resurrection hope and uh, the world that she will come back to and uh, the great joy that she'll have in preaching to those that are resurrected and we'll be able to share in that too without the troubles and the worries that we've had to face now. As well as that, we'll do it in good health rather than bad health and we'll be able to do it to people who in most cases will be interested in finding out what's happened rather than many people being apathetic. We also look forward to that time because she'll be reunited with Uncle Alan and uh, all of us will be able to see each other and, and talk about all the things that have taken place through this time and through the Great Tribulation and share that with them. As Uncle Alan says, uh, he missed out on seeing all the fireworks, but we'll be able to tell him what happened. So thank you, Jehovah, for giving us such a wonderful hope. And please, may you continue to comfort each one of us May you help each of us to see where there's a need, where others are grieving, and we can provide the comfort so that we can support each other through this time. And please, once again, we ask that you keep uh, Auntie Delia firmly in your memory, ready for the time when you will call her back, and she'll come back and be resurrected again. So for these things, we wish to thank you, because you've given us hope. And we thank you too, because you've given us comfort and we pray now, Jehovah, that you continue, your Holy Spirit will continue to be with each one of us as we offer this prayer to you in Jesus' name.